Welcome to the Speaking Deacon Show. I am your host, David Lawson. So we're all getting ready for game three tomorrow. If you're watching it today on Friday, which is what, which is uh, when I'm recording this at about nine o'clock in the morning on Friday. So if you're watching it on a Saturday, I recorded this on Friday. And so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the game tomorrow. Talk a little bit about what Dave Clawson said in his press conference. And, uh, and it's going to be a pretty exciting game. Wake Forest versus Ole Miss. Ole Miss, highly ranked in the top 10. Coming into grow, uh, coming into the Legacy Stadium, Legacy Credit Union Stadium in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Well, it used to be called Grove Stadium. If you, if those that don't know, uh, when I was growing up, but then they changed it uh, some time ago to BB and T Field. Then now they changed it here a couple of years ago to a, a Legacy Credit Union Stadium. But uh, so, so I'll touch on some key points that Dave Clawson talked about. I'll tell you about uh, a player that won't be playing on defense, in case you don't know. And uh, so we'll do the scouting report. And we'll do the you know, know before you go. So we'll just kind of do the pop on, pop off sort of thing. We won't spend a lot of time yapping. So let's get started. So the game is tomorrow night, Saturday at 6.30. And if you're not going to the game, you can watch it on the CW network or you can listen to it uh, on the flagship station, 98.1 WBRF with Stan Cotton and Larry Sorson. In a lot of ways, you can get you can uh, you can get to that by the varsity network, by the radio, uh, uh, just different ways you can you can get to it. Yeah. And if you want to watch the game, and uh, you can sync your uh, sync it to the Stan Cotton and Larry Sorison, sync that, or you can hear Larry and Stan call the game and, and watch it on TV. That's cool also. You can do that. But uh, so let's uh, so let's go over some key points that Dave Clawson said in his press conference. First, we know who the quarterback is going to be as far as starting-wise. So he's going to play the whole game unless something happens. And that's quarterback Hank Buckmere. Uh, he is... Uh, he is now the number one QB. Michael Kearns is number two. Uh, Michael Kearns is a little bit disappointed, but he sees why. He's okay with that. Uh, they're both friends, and uh, he supports uh, Hank Bach, and Bach supports Michael Kearns. And so uh, he passed for over 400 yards against uh, Virginia, but gave up. But, but we gave up almost uh, 400 yards on defense. So we got some improvement on defense to do. Wake has some, they have to, to improve in order to have a chance at beating Ole Miss because they have one of the top passing quarterbacks in the country. And I'll get to that later, a bit later on in that scouting report. Also, uh, Dave Cross and Credit Virginia, as they made the plays that the county that they needed to win. Uh, they filled in the gaps. They uh, Wake made, made, made some mistakes that cost them the game. Was they going to try to get that? Whether that will be enough to beat Ole Miss? You never know. I guess that's what they always say. That's why you play the game, right? If there's uh, upsets happening every single week. It's like NIU that beat Notre Dame. I wish uh, most people say it was pure luck, which it probably was. Because how can you hold a team to 14 points? But well, that's another uh, show. 
for uh, uh, for another team. We're talking about Wake and Ole Miss. And also, we're going to get into the other games you see on the bottom. I got on the bottom of the screen the time and the game that's being played. I don't have the TV station. You can look that up uh, online. Or what, or what channel is it going to be played on? Um, the, the Speaker Deacon show is this is the edition of game three. So this is edition three for the regular season. So uh, Dave Clawson also touched on the challenge that they have coming up uh, Saturday versus Ole Miss. He's talked about uh, 46% of Ole Miss's uh, roster is transfers, and Ole Miss also uh, is a is a highly level coach a uh, coaching team, uh, and uh, would leave with a. Uh, um, with uh, a Kiffin as the coach, Coach Kiffin, and then we uh, Ole Miss is averaging about uh, sixty-four points a game. They've outscored their opponents in the last two hundred twenty-three. Also, he touched on Ole Miss is one of the most talented teams in the. Uh, 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 and in the nation, um, then he talked about Hank, Hank, so how he, how Hank has played really well. He had some great throws, good runs, and mentioned, you know, how disappointed Michael Kern was, but it was going to be okay. And he also mentioned Jason, Jesse Davis, you know, the, the uh, uh long defensive back. Linebacker for Wake Forest plays on defense. He'll he'll be doubtful. He, he's not going to play. They're going to uh, just uh, wait until see what happens after the bye week. Because after Wake plays Ole Miss, they'll be off for a week before they play Louisiana Louisiana Raging Cajuns. That comes to uh, Legacy Stadium in Winston Salem. Be the first meeting between the two. They'll play. And uh, they just touched on a few of these things. Uh, he talked about how the games that get away, you don't forget. You know, things that just, you know, you know, they've had games in the past that they let them get away with. Games that just gets away with you. And, and, and uh, with games that you should have won. And those games that, uh, you know, you just outright lose. You know, in Virginia was a game that, uh, that they let get away. And uh, and same was last year. They let some games get away. They had close games. And uh, they'll probably have a lot more close games coming up during the season. So, uh, so that being said... So, like I said, that being said, let's go to, uh, uh, if you're going to the game, so we're going to call this game day, the football timeline, the uh, gates open at 1.30 p.m., all lots open up, you go in there and, and park your cars and, and tailgate, 3.30 p.m., student tailgate opens. Students come in, like I said, they're tailgating. 3.30 p.m., ticket office opens. Also, the Deep Town Fans opens at up at about 3.30. And then at uh, 4.15, they have the Deacon Walk. 4.30 p.m., Touchdown Club opens. Along with the Flow Lexus Club, and then at uh, five o'clock, the Polar Club opens. 
and the and then all gates open up at five o'clock. We go in at five thirty. The teams comes out on the field and warms up. And at uh, then at six o five, the pregame show begins at six thirty p.m. They have the kickoff. You know, and uh, beat Ole Miss. So that's the, uh, somebody know before you go. And let's talk. Let's, uh, so Wake Forest is committed to bringing all of the, and also Dr. Grave De Peralto was part of the 1980 inaugural Ben soccer team, which not only created but helped blaze the path for the program, knowing nationally with sustained success on and off the field. He held the multiple programs and NCAA records that have stood since his playing days. He'll be riding on the motorcycle. Dr. Jo- Dr. Jose McGill, Grave de Peralto, Jr., if I'm saying that right. He'll be a uh, part of the Open the Gate. If you want to read more about that, you go on the uh, GoDeeks.com. And so, uh, then we got some other stuff here. Just touch on a little bit about by the numbers. Four coach Clawson is 4 0 against Southeastern Conference opponents while at Wake Forest. Wake Forest currently has the record. Second longest active win streak against Southeastern Conference teams. 54, not counting the 20. 20- 20 COVID season. The Deeks have the third most overall wins in the ACC since 2016. Trailers at Clemson, 30.5, dating back to 2022. Jason Davis, Jacine Davis has recorded 30.5 tackles for losses in the last 18 games and 13 and a half sacks. Like I said, he'll be missing in that game. He has at least 0.5 tackles for losses in every Game this season in 21 of the last 22. Hope to get him back for the Louisiana game after the bye week. 100 way for 100 yards passing touchdowns since the start of the 2021 season. Ranks ninth nationally and second in the ACC. Other notables. Wake is uh, second as far as... Uh, uh, as far as uh, win streaks, Wake has an overall 18 and 5 record. Over the last past five years, a record of 18 and 5, with the closest team holding a record of 16 and 5 in the time span, is Duke. Clemson comes in third, Syracuse fourth, and Pitt fifth. When in the third phase during the Dave Lawson era, Wake Forest has been the best team in the nation of converting field goals, converting on 179 of 218 field goals in the te- last 11 years, 82.1 percentage. All, the only ones behind them is UNLV, Miami, NC State, and Stanford. And we got other stuff you can look at Nova on the uh, by the numbers. Like I said, go to GoDigs.com. You can find out all kinds of news and stuff. And uh, that's just the Now, let's go to the scouting report. We're going to go to the scouting report. And we'll finish off with the scouting report. So, the upcoming game between the Wake Forest and Ole Miss, seven up to be an exciting matchup. So, here are some key points from the scouting report. So, Ole Miss has a record of 2-0. and with, quarter, with key players at quarterback Jason Dart, who leads the NCAA in passing yards with 795 and has an impressive 87% completion uh, rate. In strengths, Ole Miss rushing defense has been dominant, allowing just one, just one yard per carry on an average. And I'm anxious to see how Wake's running game fares against uh, Ole Miss's uh, 
uh, a dominant Russian defense. Because if we, we can't be a one dimensional team just passing, we got to be able to run the ball effectively as well as pass. And the, and the, and also the, in the previous games, the Rebels have outscored their opponents 128 to 3 in their first two games. And as far as Wake Forest, Wake Forest is 1 and 1. Their key players is running back Demond Claiborne, averaging 110 yards per game and 5.8 yards per carry. That's about, we say, about six yards a carry. Strength, the, the offense line has shown good cohesion and performance, but they'll have to do a lot better and, and uh, try to uh, get in the end zone as, as much as they can and take the opportunities when they have to have them. Don't fumble the ball. Defense has to create turnovers. Uh, try to uh, slow down the Ole Miss. So I guess uh, what Wake Forest is probably going to do is uh, try to uh, try to stay on the field as long as they can to keep Ole Miss off the field. That's the only way that you can do that. So uh, the score prediction, that's not mine, is the Ole Miss 35, Wake 10. Uh, key matchup, Ole Miss passes the game against Wake Forest's defense, which struggled against Virginia. So the game will be a significant test for both teams, especially for Ole Miss, as they face their first road game against the Power Four test of the season. So, so if you're ready, get ready to go to the game tomorrow. Fill up a Legacy Credit Union Stadium. Cheer on our Dicks. It is homecoming. It is homecoming. And don't forget that the Dave Clawson Show with Stan Cotton is every Wednesday at the playground in Clemens, North Carolina. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock start time. 7 till 8. 